Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. I am so glad that you can be here to hear this proclamation of good news. The good news that we have received, the good news that we share. Thank you for being here. I have a few announcements for you. Um, number one, we are still receiving um, donations for the tornado victims here in Ohio, and we have baskets available on the tables at the rear of the sanctuary. Um, if you would like to contribute, uh, Lutheran Disaster Relief through the Southern Ohio Synod. Also, there will be a Vacation Bible School organizational meeting, and that will be held tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. here at St. Jacob. Anyone interested in helping um, should plan to attend this meeting or contact Cindy Edson. Without volunteers, we cannot have VBS, so please prayerfully consider. And then Brotherhood will be taking a little trip touring the Wallace Family Learning and Innovation Center. Is that correct? Correct. And that is tomorrow evening, and details are in your bulletin. Uh, thank you so much for all of you who donated plants, flowers to decorate the sanctuary this morning for our Easter celebration. Um, encourage you to take those home with you after worship today. Uh, if you want to leave them here, Jill Wilt has volunteered to plant them at her house. No, not her house. Um, around the church. So if you want to leave them, Jill will plant them here. Otherwise, feel free to take them home. And then today is a special day also because Kinsley Horston is receiving her first communion today. And so we rejoice and give thanks as she participates in the meal today. And we will invite her and her family to come forward to the table first to receive communion before we get into everybody else. Okay, so Kinsley, we look forward to celebrating this with you at the table. Very well, I think that's it. Um, please stand in body, mind, or spirit for the order of thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, Holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First readings from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. 
for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. And all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is uh, Psalm 118, and we shall read responsively by whole verses. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath day was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. 
Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The kids want to come on up. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Mitzi, I thought you were going to come out and sit down on the steps with us. <laughs> do, 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 do. Hello. I want to give you something that you can color on if you want to. You're welcome. How is everybody today? What is today? <gasps> it's Easter? Ooh, is that a special day? What's special about Easter? You get extra candy, that's what's special about Easter. Uh, you are right, Jacob, I got a bunch of candy this morning. Jesus is alive, and what did you say? He rose from the dead. Jesus is alive. Isn't that wonderful? That's why we celebrate Easter. What else are you going to do on Easter you're at worship here now. What else are you going to do? Hmm? Got any big plans for the day? I need a few more. I want to give you something to color on. Don't want to miss you. One, two, three. Thank you. You going to have a big meal somewhere? Yeah? Yeah? Are you going to eat lots of dessert? What kind of desserts do you have? You have whipped cream haze? Mommy must have labored over that one. What about the rest of you? Haze is having whipped cream. What are the rest of you having? You're having chocolate pudding? That's awesome. Dirt pudding. Oh, boy. Oh. Apple salad? <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> Apple salad. Sounds good to me. I'm having pineapple upside down cake. It's the first time Cindy's made it. So. Well, I want one. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How about an Easter egg hunt? Are you going to have an Easter egg hunt? Yeah. yeah? I get two, today. You, two Easter egg hunts? Today. today? Oh. Have any of you already been to Easter egg hunts? Yeah. yeah. Did you get real eggs? No. no. What did you get? Plastic eggs with candy in them? Why do you think we use an egg? Why do you think we have Easter eggs? What does that have to do with Jesus being raised from the dead? Well, I know that, Hayes, but why? Why an egg on Easter? Why can't you get presents? You are getting whipped cream for dessert. What more do you want? Can anybody think of a reason why we have Easter eggs on Easter? What's that, Eli? Does it remind us of Jesus? Hmm. 
I think there's something about an egg that can remind us of Jesus. What comes in a real egg? A baby what? A baby chicken, right? That's new life, isn't it? That's right. So maybe the Easter egg is supposed to remind us of new life. And when we think about new life, we think about Jesus being raised from the dead. And that he is living. He is our living Lord. And that's what we celebrate today. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this special day. A time to gather as a community of faith, family, and friends to celebrate Easter Sunday. The resurrection of our Lord, Jesus lives. Be with us throughout all of our celebrations today. Fill them with joy and good things as we celebrate Jesus. Amen. Now, I got some goodies for you. They're not Easter eggs. It's kind of like what happens when you chum the waters when you go fishing. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I have a green truck with the owner of the green truck that looks like a dragon with the little orange things on its head. <laughs> I knew that was your truck. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, 
O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you like to read? Yeah? Don't be ashamed. Reading is a good thing. I'm not asking you if you have a drug problem. <laughs> How many of you like to read? Yes. I have to read a ton because of my occupation. And I enjoy most of the things that I read for my occupation, but my favorite part about reading is when I can read something that I want to read just to escape. And most of the time, that's fiction. Um, I'm quite fond of crime thrillers and espionage, you name it. But I listen to quite a few books while I'm out, and occasionally I have time to sit down and actually read a novel. Now, if you love reading, you know what this is like, what I'm going to tell you. You read a novel, and you have loved every minute of it. And you just cannot wait for the end of the novel. Well, there's part of you that says, I'm going to be so angry with this ends because then I'm going to have to find something else and I'm not going to find something else nearly as good. But we read the novel and it's fantastic. And we come to the end and we go, you have got to be kidding me. That was terrible. I would not have ended it that way. The author didn't answer this question or that question. I never would have dealt with that character that way. And we can go on and on about why we found the ending totally unsatisfactory. I don't know, that might be the mark of a masterpiece. That when you actually get to the end, you get so worked up about it. And that that novel doesn't die just because you finished the last word. But in a way, it kind of lives on in your mind for quite some time. As you think about, okay, this is what I would have done with that novel and its ending to make it perfect. Welcome to today's Easter Gospel text that we have from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. All right, now, um, Gospels Class 101, brief lesson, okay? Mark's Gospel, the ending of it. When we put together the New Testament and put it in a study Bible, we evaluate all of the manuscripts that are available to us and find the best possible manuscript to give us what we think is the true exact text. Antwi antiquity, the earliest possible dating, is one of the primary tools that we use to determine whether we use this text or that text. Mark's Gospel, if you've got a good study Bible, look at it, it'll show this, a good study Bible will. Three possible endings to Mark's Gospel. We've got one of them today. Mark 16, 1 through 8 is what most consider to be the true ending of Mark's gospel. But there's something unsatisfying about this text that we have as an ending to the Jesus story. And so, there's what's called the shorter ending of Mark's gospel which adds more to the story of the resurrection. And then we have a longer ending to Mark's gospel, 
which adds even more to the resurrection story. Why is Mark's traditional ending so unsatisfactory? Mark, the first gospel written, very sparse in detail, ends his gospel like this. And this is after the women have met the man in the tomb and are shocked and amazed. So they, the women, the first witnesses to the resurrection, right? So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Jesus is not in his tomb. The stone's been rolled away. His funeral bedclothes are all neatly folded up and put in its proper place. And here sets this man in a white robe. Like he's waiting for them to show up. Well, I would be amazed and terrified myself. It's not what you expect when you go to the cemetery. Even though he's told them many times on the third day that he will be raised. But it's not what you expect because this stuff just doesn't happen. Amazed, terrified, okay, I'm there. The man seated in the tomb goes on to tell them that Jesus has been raised. He's been raised, he's alive, he's gone ahead to Galilee, and there he'll be waiting on them. Peter and the rest. Women, first witnesses to the resurrection, what are you going to do with that? what we want them to do, the ending we want to write is a whole lot more like the shorter ending of Mark's gospel or the longer ending of Mark's gospel where the women go tell. The women go tell. Peter knows. The disciples knows. Everyone knows. Jesus continues to appear. But they don't go tell in this ending. They're afraid, so they don't say a word to anyone. If I'm reading that novel for the first time, and I, okay, I've read the entire Old Testament, now I'm reading the first gospel written, Mark, I finish it and I go, no, you can't do that. Don't leave it there. That's not right. You've got to do something with this. Is that kind of what Mark's doing? What he's doing for us, the readers, the hearers, that when we read this text, we object. They need to go tell. So what is Mark saying to us? With this reading, 1 through 8, I think maybe Mark's going, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with the empty tomb? What are you going to do with the proclamation of the guy who is sitting in the tomb? He's not here, he's been raised, he's gone ahead of you to Galilee. What are you going to do with that? What do you do with it in your everyday life? What do you do when the opportunities pop up in your life to witness to Jesus? Are you going to be amazed and terrified and say nothing to anyone? Or are you going to tell what you know? The story you know about Jesus' resurrection the other appearances that are listed in Scripture. 
and the shorter ending, the longer ending, Matthew, Luke, John. Better yet, are you going to tell the gospel that you know how Jesus, the risen and living one, has appeared to you in some fashion, transformed your life? You are the fifth gospel. You may be the only gospel someone ever reads. What do you say? Best way to know what to say is to be steeped in the story. Again and again and again and again. To be steeped in the Jesus story. To engage it. To make it your own. And then proclaim in your own way, however God has equipped you, wherever God places you, proclaim the risen, living Lord. That's an ending that changes the world. But fair to Mark, I think his does too. Because when he says they fled and didn't tell anyone, it is an invitation to us to tell everyone. What do we say? What do we pass on? Paul here is helpful. This text from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, which you also stand, through which you are being saved. And this is what is of first importance to Paul. Christ crucified and risen. That's Paul. And he proclaims in 15, which is the cornerstone text of 1 Corinthians, Christ crucified and risen. Christ crucified and risen is what for Paul changed him from Saul, the persecutor of Christians, to Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. We know how that turned out. The gospel didn't just spread to other Jewish communities around the Mediterranean. The gospel, the good news of Christ crucified, risen, spread throughout the world. Because Paul passed on what he had first received and thought most important. We're here today to celebrate that in the crucifixion and resurrection, all things have changed. Jesus died for us. On the cross, he gave his life, poured out his life for the sake of the world. We are, all of us, forgiven. We are forgiven. And all of us need that because all of us fall short, according to Paul. Forgiven, set free, and born anew by grace through faith in Jesus. He was raised from the dead so that we might be raised from the dead so that we may participate not only in his death, but also his resurrection. This changes everything about how we deal with life. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, if this is the foundation of our life, that Christ is alive, and that we will live too through Him and in Him, then everything seems to be something that we can deal with in hope and in confidence. We can deal with illness, injury. We can deal with death, our own and that of our loved ones, because we live in hope. All the time. Because someone has passed on to us 
what they first received. Jesus, our living Lord. So that's your assignment from your teacher, Mark, the writer of the first gospel, who says in Gospels Lit class, okay, this is how I'm finishing my gospel. Now what are you going to do with it in your life? Write the story of sharing what has first been passed on to you, however you are able. And if possible, use words. Happy Easter, my friends. Jesus is alive. He is our living Lord. And through Him, we too shall live forever in God's loving embrace. And we shall live now in the power of the resurrection. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us confess the resurrection faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Excuse me. Uh, Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O God, your church cries out to you, and you hear our prayers. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us on this day. Breathe upon us your Holy Spirit, that our resurrection faith is renewed, and we witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy. O God, your creation cries out to you, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and all others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Lord, in your mercy. O God, our world cries out to you, and you listen. Guide sheriffs and police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders who work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. Lord, in your mercy. O God, we, your children, cry out and you hear us. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to war, to racism, to oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe and secure. We pray for all who cry out to you, those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We name some of them before you now, Lisa, Bruce and Carol, Cheryl, Abigail, Lois, Vicki, Bill, Rick, Kelsey, Richard, Tom, Mary, Tom, Carson, Amy, Steve, Jeff, Connie, Alan, Penny, Mary Jane, Ethan, Kara, Rachel, Shannon, Laura, John, Ron, Dick, Arby, Andy, Larry, Ben, Charlotte, Brian, Todd, Brent, Andrea, Rachel, Marcia, Bruce, Helen, Trish, Jeremy, Keith, Christine, Jack, Ryan, Diane, Ava, Deb, Judy, Gary, Jerry, Rhonda, Scott, Michelle, Matt, Dick, and all those others that we name before you now in our hearts or on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, O God, your congregation cries out to you and you listen. 
renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, volunteers who have facilitated and worked so hard this Holy Week and Easter. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve in this place and in all other congregations. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, your world cries out for peace and you hear us. We lift up before you servicemen and women across this country and the world. I ask that you watch over them, protect them, and bless them. We lift up Casey, Luke, Tyler, Matthew, Austin, Jonathan, Tracy, Mac, Kena, Jordan, Kaylee, Micah, Zach, Isaiah, Sam, Corey, Aaron, Isaac, and all others, especially those who are not at home with their families. May they hear the Easter story wherever they are at. Lord, in your mercy. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We will now receive our offering. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy 
that we should at in all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your Spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Come and eat at God's table.
body and or spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen.
who had a very large hand in preparing the sanctuary for this celebration and also in planning and leading, especially in terms of music and set up at the cemetery for the sunrise service. So many people putting in so much work to make this a beautiful celebration. So thanks be to God for that. Hallelujah, go in peace, rejoice and be glad.